Howdy guys. Hey guys. So a comment we often get on our channel is Ray and Jin, why don't you guys open your own Korean chicken restaurant or your own Korean grocery store in Minnesota? Believe me, we are trying. Yeah. We've never mentioned it on our channel before, but we are trying so hard. You have no idea. So especially like one place that people always recommend that we open is H Mart. I'm sorry to let you know, that ain't happening. I got the application to just be considered to open an H Mart. We need five to six million dollars in liquid assets. If we have that much money, you can just live with that interest. Exactly. We certainly wouldn't be living like arms distance apart in a 600 square foot apartment. So maybe a subscriber that has a lot more money than us and <laughs> connections can open an H Mart here, but it, it ain't gonna be us. I'm so sorry, guys. So our next option to look at was buying a pre-existing Korean restaurant or Korean grocery store in Minnesota. And we've done so many tours, we've had so many meetings, we've looked at businesses' financials and even looked into business loans and stuff. To buy a pre-existing Korean spot in Minnesota will cost us on average like half a million to one million dollars up front. And we wouldn't even get to own like the building. They're all rentals and we're just buying the business name and their like 10 year old mm -hmm. equipment. Mm -hmm. So to us, we could just spend like a fraction of that and start our own business from scratch. So we just decided that's not an option for us either. So the third thing we looked into was opening a Korean franchise here. I can't even tell you how many phone calls and yeah. meetings we've had about this. I think we call almost every Korean franchise that doing business in the US right now. Seriously. And like their terms vary widely. Some of them want to take like a huge percentage of your profit. Some like have no input whatsoever on how the business is run. You're basically just buying the name and their recipes. Also a big factor for us is there are some people that have already bought the rights to Korean mm. franchises in the Twin Cities. So you actually cannot just mm. make your own here. Yeah. Um, those people own the rights. Plus, most importantly, we don't have the Korean suppliers here. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring all the like ingredients from either Korea, LA, or the closest one is the closest one is Chicago. Yep. So the delivery fee is the huge issue. Mm -hmm. So we learned a pro tip, which is a lot of the Korean restaurants and Korean grocery stores here, they actually like work together to pay for pallets from Chicago. Actually, I think almost everyone gets their pallets from Chicago. Um, if we wanted to get pallets on our own, it's a huge expense and you have to be really careful with your inventory in order to do that. So we were kind of forced to consider American franchise mm -hmm. options. And if you know Jin and I, you know that we are very frugal people. We do not eat out mm -hmm. except maybe once or twice a month. And it is never at a sit down restaurant unless we're filming or our friends want to go there. Yeah. And the reason for that is eating out is expensive and usually you have to pay tips. The service is usually yeah. not good. <laughs> And third, the quality of the food and the amount of the food is just not, not worth good. it. I like Chef Jin way more, so we just eat at home. However, there is one American fast food place that is consistently good, their service is good, and the price is good and no tips. And if you drive by one of them, you know that they're doing well because there's always a line of cars in the drive-thru that's circling around the block. And it's really good because it, to open that restaurant is the cheapest and mm -hmm. when you open the restaurant, it's the most profitable mm -hmm. restaurant. Yep, cheapest and most profitable. Many Americans probably know what I'm talking about, but if you're Korean, you might not. So we're gonna drive over there, get some food, and talk to you more about our experience with mm -hmm. this whole opening a franchise uh, situation. So let's go. Let's go. Hi. Take your order. Uh, can we do two spicy chicken sandwich meals? Sure. Any sauce? Uh, Chick-fil-A sauce, please. Got it. Anything else? Uh, that's it. All right. Brings the total to twenty-one ninety today. Okay. There you go. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Okay. Easy peasy. 미국 패스트푸드 드셔보신 분들은 아시겠지만 보통 커스터머 서비스가 별로 안 좋거든요. 근데 이 정도면 굉장히 좋은 편이에요. 제가 듣기로는 여기 오너 오퍼레이터가 되면 
무조건 여기 직원들이랑 같이 나와서 열심히 일해야 된대요 그리고 지금 물건을 나와가지고 이렇게 직접 챙겨주세요 다른 데는 그냥 창문으로 툭 던져주는데 awesome thank you so much you too thanks this is american vibes right here you eat fast food and you just sit in the parking lot 제가 근데 가장 중요한 걸 깜빡해가지고 잠깐 매장 안에 좀 들어갔다 올게요 밥 먹기 전에 손 닦아야 돼요 Chick-fil-A, somehow, they have the best alcohol wipes. They're just so wet and so good. 이거 제가 따로 살려고 그랬는데 안 팔더라고요. 그래서 여기 올 때마다 한세개 정도 가지고 와요. When you're on a road trip in the U.S. and you've been like out all day and you're like dirty, Chick-fil-A always comes in handy. 주머니에 넣고 다니면서 하나씩 까가지고 이렇게 손 닦으면 진짜 유용해요. 이게 다른 패스트푸드점 가면은 소다 머신을 깨끗하게 안 닦아가지고 막 이상한 수, 뭐 수돗물 냄새 나는 경우가 있는데 여기는 매일 닦아서 그런지 보통 식필에 오면은 냄새가 안 나요 소다에서. And I love their sauce. Like Koreans, when they come to the U.S., they buy this sauce yeah. and bring it back. They smuggle it back to yeah. Korea because they love the Chick-fil-A sauce. 이거 타겟이나 이렇게 마트 가면은 이거 대용량으로 팔거든요. 미국 놀러 오시면은. 이거 꼭 사가지고 가세요 한국에. Actually, you know, starting a Chick-fil-A franchise is super hard. How hard is it, Jin? 이게 어, 들리는 소문으로는 IB 리그 그러니까 하버드 들어가기보다 더 힘들다는 그런 소문이 있어요. 그래서 미국에 오셨을 때 Chick-fil-A 가잖아요. 거기서 오퍼레이터 인사 말이 꼭 있는데 그 사람들 전부 다 엘리트예요. 0.00001% 확률 정확한 확률은 모르겠지만 0.00001%의 확률을 뚫고. 그 여기 지점장이 된 거예요. 근데 말이 오너지 오너는 아니고 어, 치킨필레 직원이에요. 그러니까 매니저, not an actual yeah. owner. So when you want to quit, you just have to give up yeah. the restaurant and just do another thing. But it, exactly. I heard that like you make so much money, like million dollars, like eight million dollars a year. So the retention likely, is yeah. really high. Yeah. But you don't take as an owner operator, you don't take home eight million dollars. I know the. That's just yeah. how much your restaurant is grossing, which yeah. is still really high. If you look at other U.S. franchises, this is the highest mm -hmm. grossing franchise that you can operate. So anyway, I decided, you know what? It's worth a shot. I should try to get a Chick-fil-A franchise. I've done so much research. Jin and I have done like field research. We've gone to every Chick-fil-A. <laughs> we've studied the menu. We've tried everything. We've talked to the owner operators. We've learned everything there is to know about Chick-fil-A, the history, everything. And so I applied. You want a french fry? Thank you. I like their waffle fries. 여기는 감자칩이 와플 감자튀김이라서 되게 특이해요. 맛있어요. 그리고. So the the thing with Chick-fil-A is they care so much about their quality. So they do not make new franchise locations as often as other franchises. So I think they only have around 3,000 locations in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And they're slowly expanding. Like Minnesota has gotten so many Chick-fil-A's in the last 10 years, but it's still not easy to get that position. And if you look online about the application process, there's almost no information. Yeah, because it's secretive. Top 이게, secret. 이게 Chick-fil-A에서 지점장 어떻게 뽑는지 비밀에 붙이고 그리고 많은 사람들이 이렇게 첫 관문에서 다 떨어져요. 그래서 정보가 많이 없는데 어, 저희가 유튜브에서 거의 최초로 알려드리는 거예요. So I decided to apply about one and a half years ago. The biggest draw for me is this process could be an opportunity for Jin and I to move to Washington and be closer to my family. So that was like our number one selling point. On top of the fact that if Jin and I start a business, we want to do a good job and have a good business mm -hmm. and be successful and like have a good reputation. We don't want to half-ass anything. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we're going to do an American franchise, this is the only one we would consider. And also it's the cheapest to mm -hmm. open. How much is it? 
you just need ten thousand dollars cash it's so bargain like these days you need like minimum quarter million to open anything mm. but exactly ten thousand dollars it's like I mean, part of that is the fact that you don't actually own the yeah. restaurant. But also, they are more interested in retaining good people to run their chains mm -hmm. rather than just letting anyone do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's not that it's money is not the most important factor for them. It's it's finding good people, which is why it's so hard mm -hmm. to be accepted. And when you first submit your application for Chick-fil-A, Almost everyone gets eliminated in that very first round. You're just expressing your interest and it's so secretive. You submit the application and you just don't hear anything back. There's like no information about how long it's going to take to hear back. You just maybe might eventually get an email with a link to the next step if they like you. So when I submitted that application, I didn't really think too hard about it until I got an email for the next steps and then I got excited hold on let me look at my phone really quick because I I wrote down all the steps I did so once you get to the second step you get access to their like portal which tells you all of the steps in the process I'll tell you vaguely there are approximately 10 total steps first step being your initial application of interest and the 10th step is actually becoming an mm -hmm. owner operator and between every step you have no idea if they like you if they want to continue in the mm -hmm. process you just have to patiently wait for a random email to show up and that could take anywhere from like a day to mm -hmm. six months to just never hearing back so once i heard back from the my initial application the next step was i had to fill out stuff all about my finances i read that they care so much about whether or not you're in debt whether you can handle money like how much money is in your bank account and your credit and your partner's credit and their job and mm -hmm. their money so i had to fill out this whole application about that submit it and i was like oh we're definitely getting eliminated this round because <laughs> jen and i are not rich yeah. But we do have good credit and like good financial history, so I guess we're okay with that. But next step, I got contacted for. So then I was like, oh, dang. Wow, it's moving forward slowly. I think they might actually like me. I might be okay. Uh, the third step that I wrote down was, oh yeah, they made me do a personality assessment. This was very long. I think it took me about an hour. And again, I thought, Oh, there's no way I'm passing this. I think I'm good with my customer service, but still I have zero indication of what Chick-fil-A is looking for. So I just answered truthfully and again thought I wouldn't hear anything back until I did. <laughs> what happened next? I don't forget. Mm, next one. Next one was like a resume. You have to tell them all about your educational background, your work history, and then you have to write several essays. I don't remember how long the essays were supposed to be, but I wrote really long detailed essays to show my enthusiasm and my passion. And you guys have to know that my writing level is extremely high. Not to brag, but when I was in Korea, mm -hmm. one of the jobs that I interviewed for was to do, um, what was it? You're checking the if AI grammar check this algorithm is working properly exactly and so you test it. I did the the test with many other native speaker applicants and they told me that I was the only person that got a perfect score graded with AI and they were mostly um, majored in English people mm, yeah. I didn't major in English mm -hmm. I just happened to have really high because you read a lot of books that's probably why yeah anyway my english level is really high so i felt like i produced very good essays so i felt oh yeah this section in the bag i definitely passed this part and i did yeah slowly I'm, moving forward every step along the way i would go online and i'd look to try and see what other people did once they got to that level but there's no information yeah very vague information um and nobody knows why they were like approved to continue to the next round probably 99 percent people already failed at that step exactly <laughs> so i was feeling pretty good okay 
I think we should open these sandwiches before yeah. I get to yeah. the next part. That's true. Mm. This is my chicken sandwich. Let me take it out for you. So you can see it in all of its glory. Ooh. 홍국수로 유명한 진주 해관에 가면은 고명이 하나도 없잖아요. 여기도 얼마나 자신 있으면 빵, 치킨 브레스 튀긴 거, 그리고 피클 두 조각. 끝. 얼마나 자신 있으면 그냥 끝. 이걸 음식이라고 팔아요. 근데 인기가 엄청나게 있어요. I love the sauce too. I'm a dipper, but Jin's a smearer. I don't know how to describe 부먹, 부먹. it. 찍먹, 부먹. Yeah, exactly. 그냥 먹는 사람들도 있는데 저는 이렇게 소스랑 같이 먹어요. Ooh. Ooh. And something about me too is I don't like hamburgers. I only like chicken sandwiches. So Chick Fil A is kind of good for me because you know I can just eat chicken. I'm gonna take a bite. It's gonna be crunchy. Mmm. Mmm. It's mushy. Mmm. I could eat this every day. Yum. Mm. Mm. See, I could never open a restaurant if I wasn't satisfied with the food. Chick Fil A는 미국에 매장이 3천 개나 있는 대기업이잖아요. 그런데 기독교 회사라서 주일날 영업을 안 해요. 근데 미국 사람들 중에 교회는 안 나가도 어, 이 샌드위치 값으로 11조 내는 사람은 아마 굉장히 많을 걸로 판단돼요. 맛있어서. <웃음> Back to the application process. Again, I pass to the next round. If I remember right, that next round was saying, if you were to open a location, where would you like to open a location? I thought, dang, they must like me. I'm at the point where they're even considering what I might want out of this. Oh my god. Did they you choose? No. <laughs> so I put down all of Washington, <laughs> everywhere in Washington, Minnesota. And then, of course, like some big cities like LA, LA yeah. New York, you know, just just because yeah. those would be okay locations too if I won the lottery and became a Chick-fil-A franchise owner-operator. So I thought, mm, I'm picking all the like most popular locations probably, except for Minnesota. So I'll probably get eliminated this round and that's okay. At least I made it this far. I got, that was step five, right? But it gets better. Because my journey didn't end there. Mm -hmm. No, it did not. Mm -mm. I don't remember how long it took, but it was a while. I got an email saying, oh, we want to schedule you for your first round of interviews. I was like, yes! Once I get to the interview phase, I'm like, I got this. If I can talk to someone, I feel very confident. I used to not be that way because I was a very shy, like quiet mm -hmm. person when I was young and I had a huge public speaking fear. Yeah. After moving to Korea, there were many times where Koreans put me in situations where they're like, just do it, just do that, just say that, just go there. <laughs> like they don't give you any direction, they just say do it. So I had to do it without a question. So slowly I became brave and now I feel like I, because of YouTube too, I feel like I can talk to anyone about anything confidently. So I was like, yes. Interview? Yes. I'm going to ace it. They're going to totally give me my own yeah. location. I got this. Yeah. We were so excited. Mm. But the thing is, again, everything is so secretive. You don't get a choice about when you do your interview. They just yeah. tell you when it is. Yeah. And also you don't know the questions or who you're meeting with or anything in advance. I later found out that it was a, a pre-recorded video interview. Mm -hmm. So that gave me more anxiety because like I thought I was gonna talk to someone and be able to show them my passion. But no, I have to just talk to my computer screen and be nervous and I don't even know what they're gonna ask me so yeah. that really knocked me down a little bit was it like they give you a random question and they give you one minute to think about it mm -hmm. and you have to answer flawlessly yeah they'll give you 60 seconds to read the question think of what you want to say and then bam you have to say it on the spot you cannot redo it it just will automatically move on to the next question so <clears throat> that gave me anxiety but what was worse is 
I evaded COVID <laughs> for years. Never had it, yeah. not once. Until exactly when I had to do yeah. that interview. And I was on my deathbed, like no joke. I really was struggling. Yeah. I got myself out of bed. I put my makeup on, I did my hair. I was sweating from my fever, shivering, shaking, you know, just could barely speak because my throat was so torn up. Hi, thank you for your continued interest in the Chick-fil-A franchise opportunity. Failure to complete all portions of this interview may result in termination of your candidacy. <coughs> I'm gonna start now, I'm so scared. I just remember the questions were so random. You know, when I first met my husband. So it really caught me off guard and I was already not feeling well. So I finished that interview and I just thought, I lost. They ain't giving me a second chance. They're never gonna choose me. Oh, it's done. I don't think I did well. Dang it. I'm so awkward. <laughs> oh my God. Freaking COVID had to ruin everything for me. If they call me back, I'm gonna be really surprised. But you know, I have one thing going for me and that's I had a positive attitude and I spoke eloquently. I did not stumble. <laughs> At least it's done. <sighs> it was so sad. And you know, many months went by after that interview without any feedback. So I just surely thought, well, I'm done. They hated me, it's over. And I still think that's the case because it's been like a year since that interview and I've never heard anything. So now I just come to the Chick-fil-A parking lot sometimes and I eat my chicken sandwich and I cry at what could have been. You know what? Hmm. Since Chick opening a Chick-fil-A is harder than getting accepted to Harvard, mm -hmm. just some Apply to Harvard. I have the same thought. Yeah, why not? I think I could get in. Yeah. Chick fil A, it's your last nick. I'll lock to say, or Chick fil A, if you ever want to open a first Chick fil A mm. restaurant in Korea, mm. please send us. Mm. Raise the best. Mm. Oh. Ray loves. I didn't even think about that. Ray loves chicken. Ray married a Korean guy. So she's the I perfect the match. I do all the translating, marketing, and stuff for Korean still, even today. I can handle that. Yeah. Hello, Mommy to say Mmm. 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 I want one more. I could get swing it. down through the drive-thru. Yeah, let's get one more. Let's trade places though, so they don't remember me. 